Hello, everyone, and welcome to Young China. We are a half Chinese Brit and a Siberian Russian who help you to demystify and translate Chinese culture. My name is Lucian, and my name is Artem. We are entrepreneurs who made it in China, and now we are sharing our experience with you. Last time we touched on the topics of afternoon naps, factory culture, and time scheduling in Chinese industry, which is based on the meal time. You know. <laughs> so today we spoke about different aspects of food, whether it's the scheduling, the food culture, how much people really focus on food, how willing they are to spend money on food, all these different things. And about my stomach, and about Artem's stomach as well. What I was thinking about that it's very healthy to have your meals in exact time every day.、Mm-hmm. And even I went to my doctor in Russia. I have some problems with stomach, and one of the main advice was like. Have you tried to eat at the same time every day? And then I realized, even like the next day is never the same time. Sure, really for But me. But you're an entrepreneur, right? And this is, and as an entrepreneur, your health always comes like fifth place. And that's what we talked about before for、mm. Chinese entrepreneurs. So <laughs> exactly, whatever <laughs> sales business is not that important.、Mm-hmm. Their food and afternoon nap. Which connected with their health,、mm-hmm. so easy. They、uh, make some priorities, you know. Yeah, yeah. And in China, I forced to have this schedule because anyway, all our Chinese stuff when I was working in Shenzhen was like going for lunch, and you even cannot give any orders or directions, you、mm-hmm. know. So you need to go and eat at this time, even if you don't want. That's how I actually, when it was more stable, and I have like and worked in the office every day with some employees, so I also started to have the schedule. It was the first factor that my stomach recovered in Guangdong Province after a few years. Because and another factor, I stopped to eat spicy and oily food because Guangdong food, especially in Guangzhou, when I spent five years, it's all steamed, you know. It's Cantonese food, and it's really good for your health. Is that true? I thought it was fried. No, 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 no. L- look,、uh, very famous like、uh, rice rolls. You know,、mm-hmm. it's not fried. It's rice rolls. It's steamed or、uh, somehow. Yeah, there's like, a lot of steamed food, but I thought a lot of the other dishes are, are fried. And dim sum and zhou. It's like konji. Yeah, like the rice porridge. Yeah. And I really before I didn't understand because first time I came to China like.、Uh, Ten years ago, it was Dumbay.、Mm. Dumbay, like they say, like Junkowei. It's like it's, the northeast. It's very like Junkowei.、Uh, it's like very oily, meaty,、mm. with you know, like it's not that spicy, but still spicy for、yep. Western guy.、Uh-huh. And I loved it. And <laughs> when I come to Guangdong, after and then I traveled a lot around China、mm-hmm. when I was student. And when I come settle in China, and it was Guangdong,、mm-hmm. and I. Try to find something. Yeah, you can find whatever you want there. But still, in Guangzhou and Guangdong region, there is a big influence of Cantonese. <laughs> sure, I mean it's Canton, it's, it's right? Canton,、yeah. So Guangzhou and Guangdong, they're right in the south, yeah, which is directly opposite to northeast where you were before. Yeah, and then I realized that food doesn't have taste. You know, for me because <laughs> after I, I I already used to eat this、uh, Dumbay food or I liked Sichuan food and all the things. So you can find any food in Guangzhou.、Mm-hmm. But when I start to have problems with my stomach, my doctor said even in China, they said like you just eat Guangdong food, it will be good for you.、Wow. And I start. So it's vegetables. It's not that many meat. It's a、uh, high sian、uh, seafood.、Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of really a lot of vegetables.、They're、just steamed vegetables. You know, they put some、uh, soy sauce. Mm-hmm. And、uh, it's very light, so it's vegetables and it's dim sum, it's rice rolls, it's konji, and I used to it. And then when I come to Shanghai one year ago, I realized it's hard to find it. I mean, like a proper rice roll here. Yeah,、Impossible. I mean, it's here. Here you find that because of course every city is different, so they have their own different cuisines, and just kind of daily food. 
is different then also. It's yeah. not like in, I think in the Western eye, it's like all Chinese people eat rice or noodles. That's not true, right? So if you want to find Cantonese food here from Guangzhou or, or Guangdong in Shanghai, you have to go and find restaurant. those restaurants. Mm-hmm. And actually, there's not that many of them around. Yes, that's the thing. So you just cannot go on the corner and to eat one one more rice rolls. Here, everywhere is these uh, dumplings, which is wontong, mm-hmm. hundun. Hundun, hundun. It's actually it's different with wonton. Wonton yeah. is small and Cantonese. Yeah. Hundun, how is it called? Hun, Hundun's are just dumplings, it's right? It's a big uh, like wonton. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So, and actually you mentioned a very interesting thing. Like everyone thinks that like Chinese people eat noodles or rice. Mm-hmm. And southern China, if you split China, China the, like in the middle yeah. from uh, north uh, to the south, northern people more prefer noodles mm-hmm. and southern people eat more rice yeah it's related to the agriculture because they have wheat there mm-hmm. and so they do a lot of manto and noodles manto is a kind of a like a bread, bread. roll yeah. Yeah, yeah so for them side dish is noodles and it's side dish how do you call in china they say zhu cai right Zhuzai is like main thing. Zhu shi. Zhu shi, yeah. That is like the, the staple. The staple. Okay, yeah. So the staple in the north is noodles. The staple in the south is rice. No, for sure it, it's not like... It's not... Sh- yeah, yeah. It's not always like that. But yeah. of course, yeah, there are variations. But on the whole, it's like that. And I think that's really interesting because coming from England, the Chinese food that we mostly had in Chinese restaurants there is... Guangdong food, right? Yeah. But they must have changed it a little bit to the Western you palate. It's Hong Kongese actually food. That's what I also met here in Shanghai. Mm-hmm. A lot of Hong Kongese restaurants where you can find Cantonese food, but yeah. it's really different with Guangdong food. It's all very, like back Western. home, it's all very oily. Yeah. Right, and that's why I asked you. I suppose I've I suppose I've never really spent that much time in, in actual Guangdong to know the differences between the foods. Mm-hmm. But I would venture to say that most Westerners who have not spent time in China or Guangdong, they will think that all Chinese food is this kind of oily, lots of sauces, very heavy taste. So when I'm giving lectures to like foreigners about Chinese culture, I ask the audience to raise their hands if they like Chinese food. And usually it's like 50 or 70 percent of people like Chinese food. But the rest of people, they say no. I said, like, if you don't like Chinese food, it means you haven't found yet Chinese food you like. Because there is no this concept of Chinese food. It's the same like, said, say, European food. Do you like European food? What? Italian, German, British, uh, Russian? I mean, in the Western eye, because of course it's easier to generalize, there is just one type of Chinese food. You but can't. actually... You can't. Yeah, I know you can't because China's massive. And there are, there's like, there's so many different provinces, but on the whole, there are eight large cuisines within China. Which is also have under types by them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even like... So each city, so each province will have its kind of its own large style of cuisine. And then each area of that, of that province, and then each city, each village, they'll have regional variations. And it's, I mean, because China is such a huge country the variations are almost unimaginable in terms of numbers. I have this kind of a hobby, I don't know, or this interest when my customers or my friends come to China first time and then they say, oh, no, 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 please, we we don't, I don't want to eat Chinese food here, you know, we go to European restaurants. And they say, okay, this is a challenge. Uh, what if I find Chinese food for you, which mm-hmm. you like, impossible, cannot. And then I start to ask, what kind of food do you like? Do you prefer like Thai food, for example? Uh-huh. If they like Thai food, then you bring them to... Like Yunnan. Yunnan, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So it's like, wow, I didn't know. It's like like a Thai food. No, it's different because they don't use coconut so much. But it's close because it's also sour. Mm-hmm. And they use some many... salad yeah, type yeah, stuff, yeah. 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 And if with the Russian people, it's... For sure, if you take them to Dumbay restaurant, proper Dumbay restaurant, they will love it. Because Dumbay Thai, it's uh, northeast China, is close to Russia, and that's how we have many similarities in our the Same ingredients, right? So yeah. a lot of potatoes. Yeah, potatoes. Like big pieces of meat. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, and we like it for sure. Another one, you know, sea bait hunting. It's sea bait. Yeah, it's sea a bay. big, um, big, a chain. big chain. So, sea bay is uh, northwest. Sea bay is really nice. I really love it because it's, again, like big chunks of meat, lots of bread. It's very, I mean, it's it's attuned to and that it, area, which is very cold. You know, it's like and it, grasslands and stuff. And it, again, you cannot generalize the whole sea bay. Mm. You know, Xinjiang food is Xinjiang food. It's more like a Middle Asian. Yeah. Uh, that's why I love it because I spent my childhood in Uzbekistan. So the food mm-hmm. is very similar with Xinjiang. But then sea bay, what uh, that restaurant offered to you, it's a mix of uh, Shanxi, where Xi'an is, mm-hmm. And uh, Gansu province, yeah, and even uh, Some northern inner Mongolia, I- inner as Mongolia well, right? thing, yeah. So it's interesting. It's like I mean, you can talk about Chinese food. We can make the whole podcast, you know, <laughs> with the 100 episodes about yeah, Chinese. Food. All about Chinese food, and that's actually what's so interesting about China is Chinese people love food. I mean, I cannot overstate this enough. Chinese people love food so they all even them by themselves it's it's not offensive uh, mm-hmm. when you ask like uh, do you chinese people have religion they they joking by themselves mm-hmm. that is like food is our religion you know <laughs> i think this obsession with food and i think it is an obsession like i remember asking my friends about certain travel destinations i say have you been there what's what can you do there and their first reaction is always the local delicacy, whether it's chou dofu, the stinky tofu in Hunan or Beijing duck, obviously in Beijing. It's always about food. And I'm like, what about the history or the museums or whatever? And for them, it's just food. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's such an interesting way of seeing life. And even when you watch a documentary about China made by local Chinese, it explores culture or people or life a lot through the angle of food, right? Whether it's people coming round to eat together, whether it's the actual cooking process, whether it's the ingredients, whether it's the production process for, for making this food. And there's something that I figured a few years ago is that the video production of food, advertising and food-related things is a lot higher than video production of other stuff. Because of spending. If you check how much people spend for the food here, mm. sometimes even 70% of that budget. Yeah. They could have like a not good computer yeah. or they can wear not good clothes, whatever. But it's okay for them to spend a lot on dinners, restaurants and all that. And things. that's something that's so interesting for me as, as an individual. I try not to spend too much money on stuff that is that only lasts one time or one evening, right? So I'd, I'd rather not spend, I don't know, a thousand RMB on dinner when I could buy a laptop, for example, for say 8,000 RMB. That's like eight fancy dinners. But some of my friends, even the ones who don't make that much, they're still willing to go out for like hot pot, which is never that cheap, right? And they'll like spend for the night. And it's like, I don't know. They get some like real joy out of the food. Yeah, I don't. I I don't get I it. Think as a I foreigner, I just don't get it. <laughs> not as a foreign. I just realized we are representative of two countries which is not famous for their food, <laughs> and we don't have anything special. I really. I when I traveled to Italy la- last year, the first time, mm. I realized really how Italian people also care about food and how much they talk about food mm. because my friends wife is italian so i spend much time with italian people and for example on the lunch while eating lunch they can discuss where is from this cucumbers this Ah, cucumber taste is not that good as this cucumber before Mm -hmm. i think because our food frankly speaking is really poor (laughs) british and (laughs) russian really we are not representative of that cultures that's why i can compare for example italians because they also talk about Mm. food a lot because their food is art somehow yeah the same in china but even but chinese people for sure like they uh, talk and uh, pay attention on food even more than italians or french people but still, I think like it's also some cultural thing. Because if you ask Chinese people who travel a lot 
and they can mention there is some good food in Italy, there's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. some good food in France, but they will never say like uh, Russian food is good, you know, <laughs> because like potato yeah, and potato <laughs> and uh, borscht <laughs> and pilmeni, which is dumplings, which they think like the same, mm-hmm. but our dumplings is better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, if you go for other countries, have you seen... Chinese travelers and sure, tourists. Sure, 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 sure. They they okay to just have a one or two time meals in a fancy restaurant to just try to make mm-hmm. like okay it's done in my list I tried yeah, French I food this off. and then they keep going in the Chinese restaurants in yeah. France or they even take the, this feng bian mian, the noodles, you know? The uh, instant noodles, yeah. They'll take it with them. Instant like noodles, it, yes. But I remember I was at the airport in in Hong Kong, going to Korea and some and there were some girls. Chinese girls going to Korea also. And they took instant noodles. I was like, man, do you... Well, there, of course <laughs> there's instant noodles in Korea as well. Why are you bringing like this big bag of them? It's different taste. It was, different I, I was, taste. It was such a bizarre thing to see. In Russia, there was a special project of like Russian and Chinese entrepreneurship, youth entrepreneurship. And then uh, Chinese delegations went to the smaller towns of Russia where you really... You cannot find Chinese food there. Mm. And you even cannot find a good European food there. Mm-hmm. So it's mostly like Russian food. And it's no any taste for Chinese people. And sometimes it's very strange. Like, like herring, which is almost, you know, uh, fish, fresh. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's salty, but yeah. it's kind of a fresh fish, for example. Or some soups. Anyway, they don't like it. And what they did, they brought lao gan ma, you know, which is very <laughs> famous Chinese. Uh, Condiment. Yeah, and they put it everywhere. Oh my god! On the bread, uh, the <laughs> potato, and everywhere. Just eat it right like this. And I look at them, and I feel so sorry for them every time they go to eat because I can expect if Russian delegation come to China, how will be they treated in terms of food? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we have nothing to offer, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's it's also like how you view food for a guest, right? I think in England, nice food is good, but that's not the main source of pride or enjoyment for hosting a party. Yeah. Right? Whereas I think in China, like, the food is the focus. Like, you invite friends over or you or it's like Chinese New Year, the food is the focus. Right? Whereas back home, maybe for Christmas or whatever, the maybe there's other things that are the focus, maybe the presents or the family or just being together. And also, every festival has its own special food. So, for example... Uh, Mid Autumn Festival is the mooncakes. Uh, Dragon Ball Festival is Zhongzi. Yeah. And a lot of things. Anyways, it's. And the thing is, what you already mentioned, even the small villages, they have their special meal, mm-hmm. you know. Even in like, I don't know, 10,000 people village, they still have their special meal. Sure. And that's why Chinese people used to ask me, what is a special meal of your hometown? I mm-hmm. say, uh, my hometown is not that big. Uh, 200,000 people. Oh, for sure it should be. And uh, no. And what about you, the whole region? What is Siberian special mm-hmm. food? I'm like, okay, what is Siberian special food? <laughs> it's like, what is London special food? But you just, you because know? we just don't think about food that much, right? But I think specifically for me, I mean, maybe it's because I'm an entrepreneur and so I've, my timing is never very set, right? So as you know, I have this. I have a Baomu, an Ai, who comes to my house three times a week and she makes for me the same food. I've been eating the same meals for two years now, exactly the same every I single day. I forgot about this. Yeah, you're yeah. not a good example <laughs> at all. Even I mean, me, I'm so skinny, I am, don't like to eat at all. <laughs> I, I hope there is will be some pills which is like can <laughs> just uh, change all the, the, the food concept. <laughs> but anyway, you eat the same food, which is like I'm a terrible example for me. of this because... I, so who I eat, you are to talk about food <laughs> at all, you know? Yeah, no, I know. But so, I mean, I, I eat my chicken, broccoli and sweet potato every day. Same meal, lunch and dinner for two years. And then for breakfast, I have my six eggs, six egg whites, sorry. And then um, 30 grams of, of instant oats. But for me, it's about time, isn't it? Right, it's about saving time. But this is the thing. My Chinese friends, they're like, oh... My God, 
how can you eat this? How are you still eating this? No, no, no. Even it? for me, it's too much. <laughs> but, but anyway, like, like even so, even at WeWork, the cleaning ladies, when during lunchtime we'd put our food into the microwave, they'd see my food and they'd like bully me about it. They'd be like, "How can you eat this? Like, <laughs> it has no flavor. Yeah. It's the same thing every day." And just because there is so much emphasis on food here, I think but that's food an is incredible not- thing. But it's a big cultural thing, and even the way people greet each other is nitrifanoma, which means "Have you eaten?" And sometimes they would ask nitrilishama, and I thought it's like a real question, like "What did you eat?" I'd be like, "Well, today I had noodles with some pork and some vegetables," and that's not what they're asking. They're not actually asking, "What have you eaten?" It's just like, "What's up?" Yeah, man, like, what's up? I'm okay. Yeah, nitrifanoma, yeah. The thing is, food here is uh, also, let's say, social lubricant again. Mm. It's like, as we talked about alcohol, the thing is, you can't have a proper Chinese meal if you're alone or even you're like just a couple of people. Mm-hmm. Because the it's the thing is of sharing, you know? Yeah. You're sharing the dishes and even like two people go, they can order maximum three dishes. Mm-hmm. With probably, it's not enough to just to try the whole, whole variety yeah. of different stuff. That's why I, when you work with Chinese colleagues, what they start to do from the morning? They start, start to, to talk think about, about what's for lunch or what's for dinner. What's for dinner, yeah. exactly. And where they go mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Or if not with colleagues, they start to talk with uh, friends in the WeChat groups, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like from the morning, where we will go t- tonight. <laughs> because yeah. alone you just can go and eat in McDonald's, KFC or Lanzhou, no, I mean, that's, or Xinjiang, that's, you know? That's, actually, that's one of the things that you should point out here as well, is that whereas in England, there is not really that much variation in pricing, yeah. right? So there's not actually really cheap places that you can sit down and eat except McDonald's. But whereas in China, you can eat out from any price range, starting from, you know, 10 RMB for a bowl of noodles, all the way up to, God, hot pot, and then like super duper steak or whatever fancy dinners at at really expensive restaurants and and hotels. There's a huge variation in pricing and of course quality. Whereas back in England, and I assume lots of parts of Europe, for really cheap food, you cannot eat out. You have to buy it and then cook it yourself. Yeah. Right. And that's that's a that's a really interesting thing about how food is viewed here as well. It's of course it's important, but it's also it's a little bit disposable. Yeah, there are right? a lot. That's why And that's why there's so much waste here as well. Yeah, and that's why Xi Jinping, he, even Xi Jinping, the leader of China, mentioned this this year. Mm-hmm. That there are a lot of food wasted in some restaurants about 70 percent it's terrible it's terrible so that's why now they are fighting with this and in some restaurants they have this kind of laws now really Mm -hmm. and rules you can order like n plus one dishes Mm -hmm. for example five people can order only six dishes and when you're finishing it you just can order more ah okay i know i because especially i think there's this phrase in chinese called which means eyes are bigger than your stomach. And it's a phrase that encapsulates so much about the wastage culture. And everyone knows that they do it, right? Because they order too much. Because there's so much like emphasis on food and and happiness within food. And then they can't finish it. And I've seen this a lot, a lot, a lot. And actually, after dinner, you walk down streets where there's a lot of restaurants. Each, Each restaurant has like a huge vat, like a big barrel of just wasted food and then like the bin person will come and pick them up the reason of this not because when they order food they cannot uh, plan well how much they can eat uh, can they finish this or not just because on the table it should be balanced you know some vegetables for sure some greens some cold dishes some hot dishes meat and for sure maybe some fish so the order to make it very rich variety, you know? I remember when I was younger reading in the Lonely Planet guidebook saying, actually, you should never finish the food on the table because it means the host didn't feed 
you enough, right? So if you finish all of it, it means that they didn't give you enough food. Do you think that's still true? It's, I don't know. It's so controversial because when I went to the my like ex girlfriend's home when their mom was cooked or like even Chinese friends' homes, they're all the generation at least. They say you need to finish all things, even rice in your bowl, because mm. you know mm. we have the same in Russia. Like you were uh, before generation was like has hungers. We have wars, whatever. You cannot just leave the food. You cannot waste the food. Is the food because for them food was a big thing. Yeah, sure. and in China even more when it was like uh, Mao Zedong famines and stuff. Epoch, yeah. yeah. So it's very controversial. Maybe it's one. It's a rule for banquets. Or for like uh, you know business dinners, maybe this rules is true, because you know it's when all finished and all people are not uh, enough yet. That's maybe it's not that polite, right? You need to offer more. Mm. But in the ho- in home, I don't think like waste is a good thing. We started this episode from my stomach. <laughs> that <laughs> I said that. I used to eat on schedule when I was working in the office every day mm. in Guangdong. And also I started to eat Guangdong food and my stomach got well. And now after one year in Shanghai, I again have problems with stomach because there is not enough Guangdong food. And even this Shanghai Yuntongs and like uh, Tambao, uh, Xiaolongbao is not that good for me. But how is much it? do you eat out? Actually, you eat out a lot, or because I cook. I think like half half, but even at home, I don't think I eat very healthy because I don't have time again and entrepreneurial life. This is why you need someone to come and cook you chicken, broccoli, and sweet potato. But I can't eat the same. Even I'm Russian and Siberian, and our <laughs> food is super poor. Comparing with Italian cuisine mm-hmm. or like Chinese food. But still, I cannot eat the same stuff every day. I mean, for me, it's it's pure nutrition, right? I just take my two lunch boxes out with me, and wherever I am, I can just open it up. I don't even have to heat it up, especially on the first day when it's fresh. I just eat it there and then. You know, I'm I'm waiting for a for a meeting. I'm sitting outside on a bench, whatever. I can just eat. And if you're a real entrepreneur, Artem, that's what you would do. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words here. I think I'm learning now from Chinese people that the food is super important, the schedule is super important, and the balanced food is super important. Mm. You know, recently I listened to one podcast with a uh, one scientist about bacteria in your body and the stomach, and then they said you need to eat a lot of different vegetables especially and different food because they uh, activate different bacteria like good bacteria mm. in your body mm. that's why what you do it's from scientific terrible, point right? it's terrible yeah. even it's kind of healthy it's not good for your immune system it's not good for even your brain works mm. it's it's poor you know it should be like the more different food you eat the better for your uh, for your body That's the mm. rule, and that's what Chinese people do. They eat so many different vegetables. I even still don't know the real name in Chi- in in Russian or English. You come to the market and so many greens. Sure, sure. And even like you know, we c- call all cabbage, mm. and they have a special word for every oh, type yeah, of yeah, cabbage. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And for many, even like we call all like tomatoes, they have so many different uh, and for cucumbers, they split vegetables, like not just like a fancy names, but it's really like different types. Mm. And it's also cabbage. They say, no, 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 no. This is a different thing. But it looks like it's the same. And I even go to Wikipedia and find this is almost the same vegetable. Mm-hmm. But for them, no. Yeah. And probably if you go deeper, it's really different effect to your body and stomach. And that's why I want now to learn more and more from for about Chinese food. I think it's a good thing. I think there there has to be an underlying reason as to why Chinese food is so rich and why it's such a huge part of the culture. But I think for this episode it's enough. The yeah. food topic in China is so massive. massive. And for sure in the future episode we will come back 
mm-hmm. and we now it's like so general maybe a bit messy but just like we share with you how deep this topic and how many different aspects you can talk about mm-hmm. and then we can go deeper to each topic right for example real difference of all, all eight types of chinese food or like north about, and south and rule, why why some people and some rules yeah. how do you like eat on etiquette, the table yeah. etiquette so thank you so much for listening we're looking forward to your feedback and you can send your feedback in comments of my instagram or lucian's instagram all links is in description or find us on linkedin mm-hmm. and just like write honest feedback please okay they don't want to hear about your penthouse your two two floor penthouse which, <laughs> which now as a super super successful entrepreneur don't you, think you can now every afford. episode starts from my problems <laughs> <laughs> you're like a, my uh like your therapist. private therapist <laughs> yeah <laughs> private and also sharing with the entire world with all 20 of our fans all right so thank you so much for listening my name is lucian my name is artem and together we are young China. Oh, come on, Artie. You've got Please to Please come that. to the comments and say <laughs> this is not a good idea. It's a, like... A, it sounds good. We're like in a scout camp. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye.